been going through this time of Advent, Advent season. We went through hope and peace. And today we're going to take a look at joy. And with this, we have to first, what is joy? We have to kind of talk about that a little bit. What is joy? Joy is something that I believe a lot of times get confused with happiness or gladness, <laughs> but uh, I believe when we look at joy a little bit differently, joy is not really based in emotion. It, uh, our joy is more of a state of being, and it's not really affected or shouldn't be affected by our emotion. It's that underlying current that is steadfast. And this is the joy that we're going to be looking at, but that I believe that the Bible is talking about, is this joy. It's kind of like with me, because I like music, but it's that underlying bass note that you hear that just kind of drones underneath it. It's just that steady, constant. That no matter what melody and the rest of the thing is, is happening, that is the constant. So then when things change, we can rely on that joy. And we need to keep this in mind as we go through this. And let's uh, open up our Bibles. Uh, if you don't have one, there should be one in the pew there. But uh, turn to John 15. John 15. And we're actually going to start there at verse 11. <coughs> John 15. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So there's actually three things in this that I want us to, to break down and talk about a little bit here. It's telling us three different things that we can pull from it. One, we're being told something, and we're being told that we can receive something, and that it can be complete in us. So it starts off with these things I've spoken to you. <coughs> so we're being told something and we find with the next part of that, there's a purpose in it that we can receive something. And then that this something can be full. So this idea of full. So this joy may be full. Is if you take a cup and you fill it all the way to the rim, the very top. That's full. You can't add anything else into it. And this is important for us to, to grasp a hold of, we want this completeness of joy to be, we want to receive this, right? I mean, would you like to receive a joy that is complete and full? So we have to then look at this and we have to ask this question that should be popping up in every one of your minds right now is, well, what is this joy? You know, what is the joy? What is so for us to do that, we're going to have to back up a little bit in John 15. And we're going to actually start at verse 7. And let's read through this and see what, what, what it is that he's talking about. Or how we get this joy, I guess, is more important. This is what it's talking about. How do we get this joy? Because I want it. I'm sure you want it. We want to stay in it. Verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and, by, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Okay, so here we see this. How we receive this joy. So what's this look like? Well, I'll start, if you abide in me. So this abide in, this stay with, it's staying 
with Christ. We're called to stay, abide in him. How many of us, we look at our life, but especially our Christian walk, and we can see actually where our joy is better when we're with Christ versus when we're maybe going our own way and pulling away from him. So we see something important here. Number one, and there if you're following along in your bulletins, if you invite me, our joy is, de is defined in our constant relationship with Christ. So this is an ongoing thing. It's not this idea of, well, I'm saved now. Now I can go do my own thing. There's consequences for that. If we say we're saved and then yet we don't follow Christ, there's not going to be, it's going to, our life is going to look exactly the same as it always has. We're not going to have any joy in us. We're not going to have what we studied last week, any peace in us. Now we can hold on to the hope still, but our peace and our joy will not be constant. And then the second part of that, and my words abide in you. So we find here that our joy can, is sustained only through God's word in us. So what's this look like? Well, it's the same thing that we've been talking about for a while now, is we have to be in God's word. We have to actually be opening this up. But this is even deeper than us just glancing through this and treating this like some fantasy novel that we can put up, you know, we can read and just put up. No, this abides in us, looks different. So that it's taking this word in for what it is. And what is this word? Yes, it's the inspired word of God, but it's truth. We have to understand that in this truth, we find the very foundation of our joy. It's God's words to us, so his truths to us. And what he has said in this, in his word here, to us, there's great joy in So, number two, joy is sustained only through God's word in us. And then, whatever, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is part of a passage here that is very greatly misrepresented, taken out of context. You know, we have this thing, especially when you're looking at, even if you look at it from the joy, it moves more to, instead of joy, of happiness, this emotion, and then we get things like, well, if I get a new truck, I'm going to be pretty happy or pretty joyous. So it takes on this, this name it, claim it type mentality. Well, that's not what it's saying here at all. It says, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. You can't take it away from what we just read, though. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then ask whatever you wish. So number three, what we wish for will be governed by what is pleasing to God. And we see this because if we're in Christ, and Christ's word is in us, the next part tells us here that it's going to glorify God and it's going to produce a certain kind of fruit in our lives. That's going to be, that's going to be what boils out from us is the fruit is going to glorify God. So the things that we ask for or wish for, however you want to say it there, is going to be pleasing to God. What we wish for, wish for will be governed by what is pleasing to God. And then by this, my Father is glorified. We see another important thing is joy. Joy is found through glorifying God. Who here loves to sing worship songs? 
we love to worship God. Who here has been kind of down, but then come to a point where you start worshiping and praising God, and it just lifts your whole spirit? This underlying, you may still be sad. The world, the, the world's problems are still happening. Life is still going on that affects you. But then there's this joy that comes from glorifying and worshiping our God. So four is joy is found through glorifying God. And then look here, look at the next one. That you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Keeping it context with what we're reading, the fruits we're going to bear will be glorifying God. Through that, there's a joy that comes. We, we were created, remember? Creation, we're going through Genesis. We were creating, created to be in fellowship, continue to fellowship, <coughs> worshiping God. And in perfect harmony with him. So when we actually are doing what we were created for, not only is the joy then manifested in us, but then it glorifies God. So we are back to doing what we were created to do. <clears throat> Five, with Christ's joy, we will bear fruit that glorifies God. And look at this. And through this, it shows us something. That we're his. So we have assurance in the fact that we're praising and worshiping God. And it brings us joy. And this proves something. These, these fruits that are coming off of us of worshiping God and honoring and doing what he says because Christ is in us, and he, or we're in Christ, and his word is in us, we're seeing the progression of what happens. Then what boils out is glorifying God, which in turn gives us assurance that we are his, which in turn gives us more complete, full joy. You see how this works all together. He's laying it out here. These are the tools. If you want joy, this is how you get it. And six, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. <clears throat> we can have a steadfast joy by staying. There's this assurance, and it's a steadfast, because who here or what entity can ever take us out of God's love? Because remember, as we're going to read here in a little bit, what we're going to see is God, Christ in God, us in Christ in God, the Holy Spirit in us, that that seals us in Christ who's in God and his love what can ever remove that nothing so there's great joy we have joy because of the steadfastness of his love so we can have a steadfast joy by staying in Christ's love six and then seven if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love. So, okay. He just told us right there how to be in his love. Well, we're to follow what he told us to do. And we follow what he told us to do. We find right here in his word that is where? In us. So we're med meditating on his word. That's why it's important. It's different than just reading it. It's getting Immersed in the text, letting the text speak into us and change us. Through the Spirit, 
it is revealed what the truths of his word are saying. And then the mystery of our saving salvation, of our sanctification, becoming more Christ-like as it does its miraculous work in us, which does what? Generates joy in us. <clears throat> so seven, we find joy in doing what we are told to do. It's not some big, hard thing that we overcomplicate like we tend to do with everything because we get in our heads and well this must mean this and this unless we go to this school and they tell us that. no what's it say if you keep my commands you will abide in my love joy is only found in Christ and his love we find joy in doing what we are told to do. <clears throat> just, if I've, as, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, Christ is the example for us to follow. He walks this out for us. We see him, and this is what we're getting ready to read this next part. Christ honors God and glorifies God by doing what is asked of him. So with eight, Christ is the example for us to follow. He kept the Father's commandments and there so abided in the Father's love. <clears throat> Let's jump ahead a couple chapters in your Bible to John 17. John 17. Starting in verse 1, many of you know this passage. To me, it's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. The high priestly prayer. There's a lot, a lot in this. I mean, I could preach who knows how many sermons just on this text right here. But all want us to see something in particular. We're talking about joy. <coughs> John 17, starting in verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had when with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them, and I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I'm coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost 
except the son of destruction, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Now listen to 13. But now I'm coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you send me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I concentrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. Amen and amen. amen. <clears throat> we find here this joy that Christ wants to give us. His joy. And we see right here that his joy is rooted in doing what the Father has asked him to do. So we can say his his joy is rooted in glorifying God, the Father. So when we look at ourselves and we want this joy, what is our joy to be rooted in? It's to be rooted in Christ, bringing glory to Christ, which in turn glorifies the Father. All praise, all things, all honor, all glory belongs to God alone. And because of what Christ has done, we see this. Our joy is this wonderful faithfulness of Christ becoming man, being born in a manger and enduring the cross to bring us back to himself so that through this we bring glory to him by honoring the Father and glorifying we see this Hebrews 12, 1, 2. Just real quick, you can turn there or I can just read it real quick. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, lay aside, lay, <coughs> excuse me, witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter, of our faith who look at this who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand the throne of God he endured the cross he counted it as joy to endure the cross for us Someone who had done nothing wrong, perfect, without sin. The God, part of the triune God, made man come to earth for the purpose of this. Of going to the cross in place of us. Suffering the cross for us. Because we are sinful. We are separated from him as we learn. Genesis with the fall forever separate but he's the one that come to crush the head of the serpent that we read in Genesis 3 15 so yes there is joy we find in Christ and that's when we read this what brother Larry read to us this morning in Luke Joyous news that we have. Joyous news. For unto us a Savior is born. Amen. Born for us. Amen. We take it for granted, guys. We don't walk in this joy. We allow our joy to be confused with our happiness. And therefore it's reflected by our emotions. And we're up and down. We have the good news. Because we are in Christ. 
Christ alone. We praise him. We honor him. The good news of Christ. Our joy is steadfast. Our joy is strong. Our joy is dependable. Because it's not based in us. It's based in Christ. So let us embrace it. Let it bubble out because it's a complete joy. It's full to the top. So therefore, when God blesses us and gives us blessings, what happens? It boils over. So that's what the world should be seeing from us is this bubbling over of our joy because we have the good news. And just like the disciples that he was praying for right there, we have the same thing because we are in Christ. The Holy Spirit is in us. We are in Christ. Christ is in the Father and it's secured by him. Rejoice! Always! Let's praise God. Let's rejoice to see that you. Let's rejoice to everyone we meet. We have the good news, the blessed news of God. Let's give him all praise, honor, and glory. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much. We praise you, we honor you, for you alone are worthy. May we allow this joy guide us. May we be in Christ and may his words be in us so that we can fill and walk in the fullness of Christ's joy and bring you praise, honor, and glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.